RB Life, DJ Darren here. Alright, electrical. Today we're going to be messing with the control center there. The converter, charger, this, you call it a house converter, charger, and control circuit panel too as well because it, it's got the 120 volt circuits and the breakers and then you got the 12 volt stuff too with fuses so we're doing that but I also found out that my house batteries have not been being charged or my my starting batteries have not been being charged by my alternators so it looks like I am missing this component in my system here which is the isolator I am missing that and so it's not even charging my normal starting battery so I've been driving around did the battery getting lower thank God I had two batteries and so I didn't die out there so we're gonna fix that I got my isol I got another isolator already so I could not locate this when I'm working on the system here could not locate the isolator but anyway so I got that right there there it is right here there we go simple little thing there you know one battery goes on one side one the other and then the the charging wire from the alternator so today I'm going to be locating the charging wire where it goes because it's not going to my batteries so anyway guys RB Life DJ Darren here so we are beginning the transition from this old thing 1988 uh, panel control panel you could call it uh, which is a converter so it converts uh, 12 volts to 120 and here's the circuit breakers you know like a house circuit break 120 volt circuit breakers and then there's my 12 volt stuff there's the red wire the 12 volt coming in here's all my 12 volt wires coming out to the rv all the different sections and the fuses for that so we're getting rid of that it's got a crappy charger it'll destroy your sla batteries your sealed lead acid batteries or your flooded batteries so the, the charger sucks Okay, it's a one stage, so it sucks. It'll kill your batteries. So we're switching from that over to this new sucker right here, which is the Progressive Dynamics PD4575. It's combined. It's got the thing and then the whole control panel here too. So we got 18 circuits for 12 volts. The first six or more or eight are 30 amp, and the others are 20 amp. And then it's got enough for like 12 50 amp circuits and a double 50 amp right there so we're gonna be loaded up here uh plenty of circuits and we're gonna run some new 12 volt stuff to the rv too as well um some new wires going out to stuff so should be fun pretty complex but take my time and do it simply and there's the little there's my old one so that's my old one this one is a 75 amp and 75 amp service so it's going to be able to do 50 amp service plus so i'll probably be able to do double 50 amp service that i wanted in the future but i'm planning to run all solar but man this thing's awesome it was about 240 bucks for that and uh, that's the old one and then here's the here's the diagram for my new one there you go and there's my old one right there and then there's my solar controllers right here, two of them. Now I might have made a mistake in my calculations, so I may need two more of these, so we'll see. That'll be a later episode. So but for today, we need to disconnect stuff. So what I'm doing here, these are all color coded in my RV, so they're gonna go wherever. Um, so I'm just gonna take those off and identify those later, but not really necessary. What I need to identify is these 120 volt circuits coming in. Now I have my diagram for my RV, which shows the, the layout of it, but really I need to trace it. So some of these go to the switch up here, which was a switch for generator, which is rear, rear AC or front AC, generator, shore power, all that's getting disconnected. So I need to identify these and then put a piece of blue tape on it and write where it goes. Is it coming in or is it going out power, you know? And where is it going? What area? So I'm going to identify all these. So first thing I'm going to do is disconnect all this stuff, which I started already. And then I will open up the uh, box here and see where stuff goes. 
It's already labeled here, but I don't know what's accurate here. We'll, we'll have to see. So that's what we're going to be doing. Disconnecting, labeling it, you know, tracing it and labeling all the stuff. And then get our other one. I'm going to have to cut a little bit more get, and then get our other one in there and start hooking stuff up on that. But it should be exciting. Here we go, you know. Not too bad, not not too complex. This is some advanced wiring, but it's doable. It's doable. That's all my 12 volt stuff on one side, right there. And so I had one, that box right there I know went straight down to my generator. So my generator wires went in that. Some of the stuff's gonna come out. And then um, the wire's still good, so I'm gonna still use it. The wire is still good, but the boxes, any uh, any uh, outlet, you know, double outlets, you know, that you plug in, I'm going to replace those with the GFI or whatever, the newest ones, the safe ones. So I'm going to replace all my plug-in outlets, which will only be like three or four in the RV. So I'm going to replace all those with the new ones, but the wiring's still good, and I'll go through and check it too as well. I found a flaw inside this box. They had packed it too much. And some of the rubber, well, it split, so some of the wire was was exposed a little. But you know, after 30 years, it split. So we have to double check all that, triple check all that, all around the RV, everywhere. Disconnect some stuff, cut it, get rid of it. Maybe run a couple new cables if I need to. No biggie. It's pretty cheap, um, and then that way I know it's fine. And then uh, that's it. Some of the, couple of these 120 volt wires were in the roof up here and I had to cut through stuff and, and, and just kind of tape them up and secure them and some and one's in foam, two of them are in foam so um, even though they're safe, I would preferably like to not have any electricity ever go into those circuits ever again, but we'll see what else they connect to. So, but I'm going to avoid that even though they're safe, they're cut and they're taped up and they're inside spray foam and sealed up. I'd rather have those disconnected forever, but not if I have to run all new, I can't run stuff through the walls again. So we'll do the best we can on that. But either way, it's safe, super safe, but um, that's what we're going to do on that. So we had a couple things going through the ceiling that were 120 volt. Here's one up here. There's one right there. Right there. So, so if that's its own circuit, I'm just going to cut that down here at the box and there, not use that. So, But I do want to use some plug-in ones right here. I want to use the circuit up in here. And then, and then there's one right here. So we'll see what we can still use, but number one goal, uh, mandatory safety first, safety first, and then we progress as we get things hooked up and perfect. Do not make any sacrifices on your RV on safety. If you need a part or whatever, you have to wait for it, or you need a, a bigger wire because a smaller wire is not safe enough, and you got to wait. Do not make any compromises on anything on your RV. I can't stress you t enough that there's so much to go wrong in an RV with water and electrical and gas and everything. It's just, RVs could be a ticking tie bomb, so you need to have everything perfect. And if you can't do it right, then then get someone that can. Uh, you do not want to have a nasty accident in your RV because it has so many systems, so many things to go wrong. and. Especially when you get an older RV like this. It's 30 plus years old now and you got to be careful. So I'm really going through this whole thing and super paranoid and really, really making things safe. And over safe too. So I like to, I like to sleep at night. So we'll make it perfect. But anyway, here we go. Let's disconnect some stuff. What up guys? RV Life DJ Darren here. All right, finishing up. We got the control panel disconnected here. As you see, it is no longer connected. 
there's my circuits. So I had four circuits coming in. So I'll have to figure those out in my RV what those are. I believe I don't I believe one of them's a generator. I'm not sure how they had it wired. It's crazy, but they got this switch over here. Um basically the switch is that's what it said right there. So either the rear I see can be shore power or generator and then the and then the front AC could be shore power. It's confusing. This RV you can only run both generators or both ACs if one of them's generator and one is shore power plugged in. I took the ACs out and all that, so I'm not having any of that. And I took the generator out too, so we're not doing none of that. We're all solar now, so all that wiring is going to go. But that's how it was. It's really confusing to me. Uh, so, but we're going to disconnect all that stuff and then. Any wires that were going up to the ACs, uh, those will be disconnected. They will not be connected anywhere. And then later on, I'm going to put AC in. But it's going to be above the my front door, and I already I already have AC wire for that. So, but anyway, that's what it is right there. And I all my 12 volt stuff here. Pretty simple. Uh, this main red wire. Is the main power from something but that's not working none of that's working so I gotta trace that wire right there and see I believe that wire is supposed to be from the uh, the house bank you know for the camping camping batteries the house bank is supposed to be coming in to power that I believe um, but we'll see what that is so everything's got to be redone so I just need to figure out where stuff's going and then and then wiring will be different. You know, got to run some new wires coming in here, and we got the, the battery wires from the battery banks gonna be coming in here, and we're gonna have the inverter in here, we're gonna have the solar charge controllers in here, we're gonna have my new my new baby right there, my new uh, house converter charger circuit panel, and then we're gonna have a fan hooked up right here as well with the I'm gonna make a slip in filter so fan so it's going to be uh taking dust out of my rv but also it's going to be going through all the electronics and cooling so it's going to the big air filter so i'm going to move the thing right there and right here is going to be a 10 by 10 with the fan on the inside and it's going to have a filter it's going to pull all the air through the electronics and then out that way so it not only does it take all the dust out with a removable filter that I'm going to customize. It takes all the dust out of the RV, but also will be cooling my electronics and quietly too, real quiet. So two for one on that. That's what you need in an RV. You need two for ones, three for ones. So there's my wiring. There's that. So now I need to start tracing stuff and then I'm going to use the, the tape to tape it up. And then uh, we'll start cutting the hole for my new baby right there, which can be mounted vertically or horizontally. I'm going to see if it'll fit vertically. It's pretty big. Let's compare it here. Vertically, I don't know. I don't know. This is pretty tall here, but I could do it. I'm going to have to do some cutting. I'm going to have to do some cutting. Or maybe just take, take this panel off, cut a little higher, and then cut a little bit out of this. I'm gonna reupholster re all this stuff right here anyway, so. But yeah, I need to mount this vertically like that if I can. I don't know if I can, man, that's pretty, that's pretty tall, I don't know, I don't know. And then I want my fan right there. I want my fan to go right there with the filter. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we can do otherwise. that it tells you exactly which way to mount maybe it might have to be like that it might have to be like that and I just gotta leave it there we'll see all right you guys let's 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 start tracing wires and figuring out where stuff goes and then uh, I'm gonna have to cut cut some stuff and get the sucker in let's do it RV Life, DJ Darren here. 
Making progress on my new control center here, house converter charger circuit panel. So I just cut it. This one you can mount vertically or horizontally. I want to do vertically because I'm going to do a fan filter system, a big, a slidable filter I'm going to put in here. So pulls, it'll clean the air, then also cool all the electronics in there. Um, but anyway, there you go. There's the rough cut. Right there, it's a little bit off. Let's put that there. And this will be the, the cover for it right here. It'll look like that. And I'll probably put a little, I'm going to put a little filter right there too, dust filter. I want to keep the dust out of this thing and the whole box here. But this side right here will be a major dust filter that I will be able to just replace. And it will clean all the air in my RV from dust. It will also cool all of my electronics. And uh, all that, so it will be awesome. But there's that, barely fit, fit in there, so just barely squeeze it in there. Still gonna be able to do the flat piece of wood on top and if nothing else is affected on the bench, anything, so I like that. So now the next step here is, I just looked on the old thing, all these are gonna be rated 15 amp circuits. So this is all the circuits really and then two right here so I'm just gonna look on my little electrical diagram and see which ones are which and label them and then I'm probably gonna add a couple so I'll get labeling these right here and then these three are separate so I want to see why I think these are the fridge ones this is the main power in I believe but we're gonna be doing something different so we're bringing our own separate thick cable in separate cable from the whole battery bank uh, coming into the into the into the converter here but but there's that let's get to work let's do this rb life dj darren here all right little electrical update got my control panel here uh pretty much all wired up i got all my 110 stuff wired up there all my uh my grounds and then the the neutral and then the blacks so is gonna I gotta buy some breakers and then I got the thick one here that's the main breaker power coming in that is for the 30 amp plug so I'll have a cord whenever I want you know a cord whatever and it's gonna plug right into that comes in that's the main power for the for this unit and then uh, I'll have a 50 amp one that will also come into another breaker and then uh, the battery right here is where the solar stuff comes in, so that's battery positive. It's pretty big, pretty big uh, gauge, I think. I don't know what that takes, maybe six gauge. It's pretty big, but, uh, and then there's the neutral, sorry. There's the neutral, or, or neutral, or, or, no, I'm sorry. That's the ground, that's the positive. Um, so I got that in, and just trying to figure things out. Um, one thing I'm doing here is I'm going to be running a three or a 500 amp shunt and these cables take up to a little over 400 amps or more and so what I a problem I had was when I bought these things um, the bar that connects these inside is not four or 500 amps it won't take so these are going to be low amp connections for things um, these posts are fine I can just double up on those, so that'd be fine, but I think I need to get two more of these that are high amp that'll take four or five hundred amps. Um, and then there's my positive bar here for my low amp positive stuff that'll come off. And uh, for other things that I want and whatnot um, that are DC, they can be run off that, little fans and whatnot. Um, but everything will be off fuses first. So the fuse and then it'll connect. But I may not even need this, so we'll see. But you'll like what I did with the negative one. So this is the same bar right here, same as this one, but it's black. And so what I did with that was just put two screws. I'm gonna glue it on there too as well, so it'll be glued and screwed. And it matches good because all these whites are the are the house grounds. And so this is where everything was. So I wanted it to just be grounded right here, so it's all nice and 
compact right there. And then I also have another ground wire coming up here and another uh, one. So all I have is right here. I need to connect this. This is just a solid, just a solid copper wire from going to the frame. So that'll connect there as the main ground for this thing uh, here. So, and that's my that's my 12 volt stuff. So that that uh, this is separate. This is separate from my solar stuff. So that gets its own ground and whatnot. Um, okay, and so there's my I have a 300 amp shunt, and I figured that wasn't enough, so I got a 500 amp coming on the way. So the way you can tell is is these crossbars. It has three crossbars. Each crossbar is 100 amps. So the one that's coming is five of them. So you 500 amp. So and then and then you see this bar right here. This is four odd, four o gauge. It's gonna go down. It's going down in there, and it's gonna just go to right to the frame of the RV. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna scrape off, grind down a nice new metal ground. It's gonna be bolted on there all nice. Then I'm gonna uh, spray paint over it so it doesn't get corroded. And that's my main ground coming up from the frame. Um, and it'll go right here. It'll go on there. And then there'll be another big cable coming off here that will go to my inverter. So it'll come up right here and then this. So that's positive for the inverter, negative for the inverter. And then uh, all my other positive things will come from this too as well. So this will go right to the inverter, but off of that will be an 8 gauge coming to my control center here. And then, um, and then I'll also be powering, you know, there'll be battery connections to the solar controllers, and then there'll be, then that'll be it. So that's, that's not connected either right now. So once I wire up the whole system, then I will connect the positive wire on the batteries. But for now, it's dead, so nice and safe. You see how thick this cable is? It's crazy. So you don't want to accidentally. You know, be grounding this on anything or something, it'd be such a huge spark and melting. So, keep it safe. So, this is where I'm thinking from my controllers here because, as you see on the front, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna have a fan and fan and filter system right here. So, this will be that's gonna be pulling in a lot of air right here and blowing it through here and pulling it out. I got another fan that's gonna be over here pulling it out, as well as the fan right there is gonna be pulling it out as well. So I want the air to go by these, and you see on the back of these, they have fins. So I want the air to, to be blowing. The air is going to be blowing this way. So I want it to blow along the fins. So that's why I'm not going to mount them like this. I'm going to mount them like this, so the air can get all nice and through there, underneath there. And I only need two of them, so I'm mounting them how you saw like this. But they'll be flat, you know. I'm going to actually put a wood board right here. And they'll be flat against that. They'll be like, they'll be sitting like this. So, and then air will be able to go all nice behind there. Um, and down farther, actually, down farther, because right here is going to be my home computer bolted to the wall right here. So, home computer, just the motherboard and all that. And then my solar charge controls right there. And then right here, let's see here. And then down here, my inverter, and then some extra room for stuff here that I'm gonna have to do too. So, and then I got the remotes for the solar charge controllers. The remotes are gonna go up through the wall, and then this wall will have a nice new board put on it, and it'll be dismounted on the wall probably, so I can read it probably at the top there, so I can read the solar what's going on with the solar, and the inverter one will be up there too. So, all my little electric remote things will be up there and I'll show you what I'm talking about so these little guys right here they come in big box things here but I'm just gonna cut the hole in the back like this and they'll mount right in the wall so I'll just have these up here like this so I'll have one there another one there and the one here for the inverter and if I need anything more I'll probably put that there so we'll see I'm gonna put my just you know electronic switches and stuff right there Nice little, keep it one nice little area and it runs right down. I made a 
nice new hole here if you can see here I just did this hole here so that I can run a bunch of wires and the solar wires are going to come in here from the solar panels and coming down through here and then I'm running them up through here through the this and through switches and whatnot so got a nice pathway for all my wires and everything done got all my all my 110 stuff tucked in all my 12 volts already done that was so easy and fun got my super nice ground which I'll have an 8 gauge ground which will connect you know directly over to the side of that shunt so right here you know this will be an 8 gauge there and then uh, another 8 gauge positive will be going to the positive stuff probably like I said to that bus bar and then it'll run into this thing and then a couple little things I want to run like uh, alarm system and a couple fans I want to run so they're gonna be connected to this little guy and these little screws and those are low amp things so this bar only takes maybe a hundred amps so it's gonna be lo you know for for the low amp stuff and uh, to double connect things I got these posts here you know to double connect things uh, and then it's coming along you know I I, uh, I actually ordered a cable I didn't need but I'm gonna need it um, I probably I need, I think, a one-foot cable, so I got this three-foot. I'm probably just going to order the one-foot cable or two-foot and let, make it a little shorter because it's going to be too much. So I have an extra cable, I think. Um, it's just kind of tough to plan out. Uh, so I made a little mistake there, I think. I don't need, I don't need that three-foot red cable because this comes in here and it's going to be able to reach the inverter. So, so we'll see. So I think I need a one foot cable and I'll get that order. But yep, yeah, there's the update. Um, let's see what else. Electrically, that's it. Then I was tracing this wire down that goes below the RV, tracing where that goes. And then uh, basically done. I got I got all my solar wire ready to go. I got I gotta put my panels up. Um, I just need that one foot. 4 0 gauge and then I'm good to go good to go and, and then I also need a big 500 amp or whatever uh, fuse so I'm gonna order that today too that'll, that'll protect the system and then I have 30 amp fuses for the solar coming in and then I think I need another 80 amp for that so I'm kind of calculating as I go um, but um, 